Um, yeah. Uh, hello everyone. I'm just um, down on the tree 2000 or something like that. This video was meant to be uh, my reactions to extreme rules, and I was gonna do it the way I always do it with my reactions and the little screen in the bottom. Uh, fortunately, uh, there's only one recording that came out yesterday when I did it, the reactions for it, and that was pretty much just the bottom, the screen capture for the actual Extreme Rules itself and my recording of my actual voiceover work and uh, in the camera didn't come out as the microphone was the wrong microphone type and I played it back and there was no sound so uh, here I'm going to apologize and basically I'm going to try and um, well I don't know what I'm gonna do so for this video I'm doing now uh, I'm gonna see you in the next part of this and I'll just apologize and I'll see you in the end of this video hello everyone Dan Video 2000 here, also known as Dan Demo Xbox Live, and as I said in, earlier in the video, my recording for this didn't exactly come out, and so I'm just going to do a voiceover for each part, and as you can see on the bottom of the screen, it's the kick on the show, and it's about to start, and I will tell you how I felt, I, I'm not going to do the exact where I actually said, oh my god, my god, it's just one, I'm just going to go over a few bits and pieces of and how I felt about the matchup, and probably rate it out of 5 stars, or whatever, and tell you how I felt about this, so, as you can see, there's still cages up, and this matchup, and look at the kick off show, you've got Ray Young, uh, you also have, I think, Sam Roberts was there, and I also think so was Booker T uh, in this kickoff show panel. And also, you've got David Atonga as well. Uh, so, I'm going to get into the main part and the main actual matchup uh, from the entrances and, uh, and the ending of the matchup as well. And I shall see you. In a bit, thank you very much. As Booker T rises up from his chair to accept his uh, little speech, and I'll see you then. Well, as uh, here we go then. The first match up, I believe, for the kickoff show, I missed. I have skipped way too, um, too far ahead, and uh, this one because I watched a couple, uh, but the, as I think. It was Sam Cara versus um, Gray on Jonathan Mayers. And so here come the new day, the hair entrance. And in this bit, the power. So, yes, it's um, the new day. Alright, coming on here. Uh, coming out here. So yeah, they're, I think they were facing Sanity in this matchup. And this matchup was a tables now. And uh, yeah, it was all right. It wasn't too bad. Because you're about to find out. <laughs> so yeah, then the new day making their way to the ring. Yeah, let's be facing sanity. And here comes Sanity. 
as I didn't know the rules in my predictions, and the rules are actually as followed: it's the first person to put the one member of the team through the table wins the match. And I will promise you, I will try and get my proper uh, reactions for SummerSlam, which is the next pay-per-view, uh, properly up and running next time. Again, I apologize for this type of video, uh, as you will see my uh, proper reactions in SummerSlam, I'm just going to commentate on what went down and what happened. And I believe we're about to get underway for the first match. Sanity versus uh, Blue Day for the uh, well, I was gonna say titles, but I mean a title match. And uh, yeah, the brawl's on the way, and we're gonna get to the end of the match uh, right about now. Oh, there goes there again. As you can see, this is the end of the matchup for the kickoff show matchup. It's Kofi Kingston is about to put Eric Young through the table. Uh, then Alexander Wolf manages to get uh, Kofi Kingston up over in the apron here, as you can see. And uh, right here is when he tries to turn the suplex um, Alexander Wolf through the table, but it backfires. And so I decided, uh, well, I thought it was very edgy and I thought it was so close. And yet, when I watched the entire matchup, it was a very good matchup up to this point. And this is where it ended, where the elbow threw the table, and then Eric Young wins here for Sanity. Sanity pick up the victory. Congratulations to them. It was a very good matchup. Back with the before, if there was a, a dive that uh, Killian Dane did. Uh, and he put, he took out both members of the midday, and there was even this tap, this Tower of Doom bit, in which Kofi Kingston took out uh, you know, Kili, uh, Alexander Wolf and Eric Young, and it's just, it's just really good matchup overall. That matchup, I would have given probably three stars because it's actually filled of good spots. And I'll let them move on to the next match, and the main, the first match of Extreme Rules. And uh, here we go then. Yeah, this was the first match of the night on Extreme Rules. Uh, Michael Cole, Corey Graves, and Jonathan Coachman were at ringside as it was a Raw match. It was for the Raw Tag Team titles, that's Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, the Raw Tag Team Champions, that def defended their titles against the B Team. And boy, that matchup was pretty quick, as we're about to see the Woken one that make his entrance here. And I was, well, all into this matchup. That's not, not into the matchup, but the entrance alone, just the Woken persona of Matt Hardy. Or broken man hardy. Which if I want you prefer to call him Delete you Yeah. Yeah. My reactions were but this were very much the same as everyone. Delete, delete, delete. Out comes Bray Wyatt. Yeah, right here. The Delito of Worlds. The fall of fireflies going around. Uh I honestly wish I could turn the sound onto this, so I'll probably figure out a way to do it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, the matchup of all pretty impressive as the B team. Uh, Make their entrance quite a bit. Uh, 
Oh, look, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I'm just so disappointed that it, I couldn't get this out. But this is just uh, my other version that I just thought I thought of the spot. So here it's uh, the Deluders of Worlds. So at that time, we were the Royal Tag Team Champions. So yeah, again, this is not my uh, proper reactions of my uh, surprise look reactions. I already know what happens and you, trust me, it's very frustrating for me to actually act surprised. So, um, this whole I or me saying it was a surprising matchup, you'll, I, you will see in a minute when I show you. And uh, we will get to the matchup in just a bit. As the B team will make their entrance, I will get them in the ring and we'll see the end of the match. Uh, as soon as I get the B team, as soon as the B team make their way to the ring, of course, delete, 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 delete. And here they come. The challenge is at this point. And the push towards the Raw Tag Team titles were actually very uh, surprising here. I mean, I didn't expect them to go this far. But they did it. Yeah. So uh, Michael Cole tells us that they were undefeated since the Miz left. And uh, Nick Crosby explained to us the story already that we already know. I must admit, for later on in the Steel Cage match, after watching it back now, uh, in this reaction video, that middle and other table looks a lot bigger than it should be. I'll get to that. I'll probably skip this part. Just the announced team. So yeah, the Raw Tank the Donald's on the line. Uh, the B Team versus the Edo of Worlds and Ron Durrells and Snash has bought a ticket. Again, I'll get back to her later on when I get to the reactions. Uh, I was very. What was gonna wonder what she was gonna do, and if she was ever gonna do anything, and uh, I will get to that later on. And uh, we're about to go here, and the bell's rung, and when I saw you, I will see you at the end of the match. As we get a little teaser here from Bray Wyatt and his brother Bo in just a second. As Bo starts off the match with Matt Hardy, but then Matt Hardy, he makes the tag and we get a little brief million of brother with the brother. But apart from that, we'll see you at the end. And it's, this is pretty much near the end here of this matchup as Bray Wyatt tries to make that huge hot tag to at the end, where Bo Dallas gets in the ring as well. Okay, so they have this little bit of the beginning, but they tease it, and uh, by the end, Bunny here, really, it's that splash in the corner. He goes to go do Sister Abigail, and as I remember correctly, there, I could have to actually, he got involved. They hit, then he hits the Yuganati, they go for the climax, and, uh, well. We all thought it was going to be the end as uh, Matt Hardy goes to join in, but uh, gets interrupted by Curtis Axel. We'll see you in a second. And then Matt Hardy gets ran into Matt Bo uh, Bray Wyatt by accident, and boom! There it is. Uh, one, two, Three new Raw Tag Team Champions! 
I didn't expect that at all. I mean, my reaction was a bit like this. Oh my god! I can't believe it! But in the original recording, but, you know, like I said, this isn't the original recording. This is me just coming off and thinking of my feet. And I was going to get you to the next match. I probably won't not show the entrances this time. I'll just get to the next match up and I'll, uh, Show you the end of that matchup. Of those, usually I do show the entrances, but I guess this isn't your typical reactions. I'm so sorry about that again one more time. Uh, Matt Hardy looks pissed, and we'll go to the next match. And this is the next matchup as uh, Finn Balor is, is going to be facing Baron Corbin in this matchup, surprisingly. Uh, it was. Uh, interesting match to say the least, as, uh, as you can see it's just Finn Balor making his entrance here. Uh, the typical, yeah, put your hands up in the air when you hit the music, the two sweet sign. And this is Baron Corbin, he makes his entrance here in this, this part. Uh, yeah, it's terrible as well, you know, body Constable Corbin here. Oh, Stephanie man's Constable. Personal constable raw Baron Goldman. Uh, I do like Baron Goldman to be honest with you. He's actually a uh, pretty good wrestler, as in this <laughs> part <laughs> made me laugh a lot because, again, a bit like when Fandango first made his debut, he wanted people to pronounce his name correctly, and he was like, Now nah, I'm not having no with this. You better say my name correctly, Jojo. I was like, Go to Stephanie McMahon. And she was like, oh really again? Alright, fine. Uh, I don't know, Jojo should be sassy. Awesome. Um, if you listen very carefully. I thought that was quite funny. Uh, to say the least. And then a bit after this the match starts and then I will probably go into the end of the match and uh, yeah he's like this is pretty much near the end of the match uh, the typical banner match over where you can see the uh, hesitate truck here it goes up to the top rope to hit the coup de gras he goes into the Drop turn as Michael Cole keeps reminding us. Uh, goes up and gets knocked down by Baron Corbin through the days for an end of days, and then surprisingly gets caught by a roll up, nevertheless, by Finn Balor and has the one, two, three. And Balor takes up the victory in this matchup. A very, it was actually a very quick pace and uh, mostly dominated by Baron Corbin for most of the matchup. But then there was a couple of offense moves by Finn Balor in the entire matchup. It, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. I, I, this matchup was not bad. I, know. I forgot to give the Raw attacking titles a, a rating, so here's the rating for that match. Two and a half stars for that Raw attacking title match. But for this match, again, I would go for three stars. But, well, not three stars, actually, probably two, because it wasn't exactly great. I would say three, but. Yeah, I don't deserve the uh, three stars. It's just Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin. And the replay is, you'll see the, the roll up. Quick cheeky roll up with the one, two, three. Uh, good match overall. It's just a filler match to prepare for everything that's going to happen. Yeah. And I got a roll in the night. So. Yeah, it, it, pretty impressive victory. Just like shrugging it off saying, eh, I gotcha. And of course the next match was the Smackdown Live Women's Championship match. And James Ellsworth is gonna be inside a shark cave. I didn't like this match at all because it was like, for one, too short as uh, you can see Oscar making her entrance here and uh, getting ready for uh, to challenge for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. I I just it was just too short. It was so stupid for the shenanigans. It, the, the harness was so noticeable on uh, 
Elden's Fourth. At first, when I first reacted to this, I didn't know what was going on. As uh, this is the first match I fucking skipped over Carmella's entrance by mistake. I didn't mean to do that. Um, but this is the end of the match. As uh, uh, Ellsworth manages to get himself stuck like a pinata. Uh, but I was, see, it's, it's just so like, quick. And I was, there was a lot of matches that were quick. And I just did not like it. Uh, it's so boring. Like, I'm so sick and tired of uh, people like Oscar getting a chance and a chance and a chance again. As you can see the fucking heart, as you can see it right there. It was so embarrassing to watch, possibly for the people that were there. I'm watching it on the day on the WWE Network Live, or even the day after that painted. I watched it on a Monday. Today is Tuesday. Uh, today is I'm editing this video. It's like, it was so, so stupid. Like, like she wins, like, Carmella wins in just a second. It, uh, by smashing her head into the cage right now, as you can see, you're about to, what, what, to witness. She creeps from behind, and underneath the bottom rope. After this happens here, there's all the shenanigans. It's the lot of shenanigans happens. I just, I didn't like it. That's in one bit. Uh. So, what was the point? The, the, the last guy is just no longer that main attraction that she once was for a year. And you watch, 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 from behind comes and boom. There it is. That was it. Just a fucking push the button, the cage was enough to knock her out. Not even a signature or a finisher, but like that. Come on. <sighs> Seriously? I just, I just didn't like it. But the next match was even worse as it was Jeff Hardy defending his championship against uh, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura as uh, Jeff Hardy made his way to the ring here. And I was excited for this matchup as I was maybe gonna see a normal match between them both, but of course no, that was not the case here. Uh, yeah, you'll see in a bit as Jeff Hardy makes his entrance. Uh, I'll get to Shinsuke Nakamura's entrance in just a back, in just a second. And here we go, we've got Shinsuke Nakamura's entrance here. Uh, I do like his new theme song, to be honest with you. It's quite cool. I don't know what they say in the song, but it's a very cool lyric. It's, uh, it's, it's not the Rising Sun anymore, it's like a, a thing from something different. But as you can see, this is the beginning and the end of the match. Uh, you'll know, see in just a second what happens. It's Jeff Hardy, I think, personally got screwed out of this. But uh, later on, we learn something about uh, the reason why he possibly lost this match in such a quick succession. Plus, we see a returning superstar in this match. Well, after this match, I should say. Uh, but yeah, the introductions from the Greg Hamilton, one of my favourite announcers of all time here, because he gets such a good pop every time. There's Jeff Hardy, where I think he's going back to the whole face paint scenario. Uh, because I think he's going back into that, that uh, Brother Nero, I think. Uh, I don't know what he's doing, but hey, I like it. I like this Jeff Hardy, I always did. I uh, always like wearing face paint. Uh, it was really, it made him the, uh, the enigma. That, and it was the person that he needed to be. And there you see it, the low blow, the referee's back was turned, and I, it was, the referee was like, oh Jeff, do you want to continue, want to continue, Jeff comes up, he gets up, and he goes, yeah, I want to continue, 
I want to continue. And you'll see it in a bit. Want to talk about? A low blow before the match even began, and he's like, uh, "Do you want to continue?" As you can see, John Cohn's like, "Sure, Jeff. You sure?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'll ring, ring the goddamn bell, you fucking idiot, you striped zebra idiot, King Shasa." He then covers him one, two, three. Not even worth uh, one star, probably half a star of a match because it was so quick. But the storytelling of it made it go up to like one star for me. So I like it. I like it. it was... I mean, it's just because of the way that it's. It just. It's just. It starts and ends. I didn't like the length of the match. Uh, boom! There it is again with the replay. You'll see it. And we see a returning to start happen in just a second. It, one of my favourites, to, to be fair. Uh, long time coming. Long time coming. Uh, came back from a surgery. And you'll hear the music strike in just a second. There you go! Randy Orton's back! Randy Orton made a comeback in uh, an Extreme Rules on Sunday. And boy, did it, did he ever. As you're about to witness what he does, he comes in the ring, he looks at Shinsuke Nakamura. I think, I thought at the time he was going to challenge for you know, the this Championship. But then he turns and pays his attention to the fallen, broken Jet Party who's just been low blowed and King Shelford and lost the championship as he gets him on the ground. I thought he was going to go for a ground and pound. But then he just, well, he goes low. BANG! Kick to the balls! That was surprising. When I first saw it, I was like, why Randy Rye? Why would you do such a thing? We're about to see the rematch on SmackDown Live uh, for the United States Championship. Who knows where it's going to go and what Randy Orton is going to do next. As we move on to the next match, ladies and gentlemen, it was Braun Strowman taking on Kevin Owens inside a steel cage. And that was a Fun match to watch. I tell you what, watching this back now is making me feel good. As Braun Strowman makes his way to the ring with the Money in the Bank briefcase, known as the Monster in the Bank, Braun Strowman is one hell of a big dude doing big old things. But what made me laugh is that you're in the matches, he can flip over trucks and he can flip over cars and do all that kind of stuff. But he can't get out of a certain predicament that I'll show you in a bit. As uh, after this, uh, Kevin Owens makes his way down to the ring in just a second. As uh, Kevin Owens makes his entrance here, uh, as you can clearly see, um, with Braun Strowman was licking his chops and ready and waiting for it. Braun Strowman. Uh, ready and waiting for Kevin Owens to make his way to the ring. Uh, which, after that, it's all, it was all excitement. The usual throwing your opponent against the steel cage and not that type of malarkey. And this is uh, pretty much near the end of the match. And as I said before, Braun Strowman can lift up trucks and tip them over and tip ambulances over tip over cars, but he could not get out a single pair of handcuffs. He must have been made out of God knows what if Braun Strowman couldn't get out of there. And as you can see here, but Kevin Owens was taking it to Strowman, but made the mistake of not escaping early. I was like, what you doing Owens? Why are you not escaping the cage? And he was like, is that what you got? And so I was just like, why would you not 
escaping and after hitting the choke slam I thought he's gonna Brian Storm's going to rip those handcuffs off and finish him off. But still couldn't get out. But this match was just too hilarious. Just too hilarious to watch when you saw Kevin Owens get beating the crap out of had a few moments where he hit the cannonball into the uh, Braun Strowman, but apart from that, this is pretty much the end of his. And it was at the end, it was the best bit because he's like, ah, suck it! And he starts to climb, he starts to climb, and finally Braun Strowman gets out of those handcuffs. As you'll see, and it's like, he's like, yep, yeah, see you later, bye, I'm done with climbing the cage now. He should have climbed a little already, if you ask me. But then he finally gets out those uh, handcuffs, runs towards Kevin Owens, gets to the top of the cage, and from there is the, what, the most extreme moment uh, that you'll ever see. I'm just gonna let you watch it. He's like, and at this moment, Kevin Owens knew he fucked up. Oh my god! As good as my witness, he's broken in half! But technically speaking, he won the match because he was the first man to escape the cage. Technically speaking, wink wink. Even though he got chopped off at the top of the cage, the entire night, this right here. Was the most extreme moment I ever saw. And the rest of the night, so this was because even though it was pretty short, but this matchup gets a four star rate now. I'll tell you that much. And uh, he got wheeled out the arena in a stretcher, and that was pretty much it. As you can see, the next match was then Team Hell No versus the Blood and Rockets. But before the match started, uh, well, what, earlier on in the show, uh, the Blood and Brothers uh, attacked uh, Team Hell No, and Kane took out with a leg injury. So Daniel Bryan, as you saw, just made his entrance, and this is the Blood and Brothers entrance right here. And so it was a two-on-one scenario at the beginning of the first half of the match. Uh, it was pretty quick and very interesting to say the least. But I did enjoy the little underdog story of the two-on-one -one situation. It's a good way to protect Daniel Bryan in a sense from getting hurt in a sense. As this is the first. Uh, start the start of the match, and then they're getting ready to go here. And so uh, with Kane out, it was all for them Brian by himself. And a little bit later on in the match, Kane comes back and uh, he's got all booted up. And as you can see in a minute, he's all booted up and ready to go. It's a bunch of brothers took him out by like, attacking him. But the like, he's like in between the door and using the hammer and the door and smashing it on him. Uh, that looked like it was really painful, but obviously now he's getting back out even though he's injured and hobbling down to the ring. He did hit a couple of choke slams, but overall it's a bad leg. It was uh, so bad that he had to make a tag to Daniel Bryan. And this is the end of the match for me because I thought that Daniel Bryan was going to hit the knee plus here and it gets caught by Eric Rowan. And Eric Rowan shoves him into Kane and just, you know, demolishes him with that leg lariat. And then tags in the old cup and does like this powerbomb off the top rope, like a doomsday device powerbomb slash clothesline. I didn't know what move that was, but it was a 1, 2, 3, and it was over as the Bludgeon Brothers won the matchup and retained the title. titles. So, overall, this Dash match begin. The Extreme Wars was filled with a lot of quick matches, and then this was one of them. Uh, give this match again probably one star. Uh, to, I like the. 
But to balance it up into two styles, I think the hell on the to story of uh, making the Robin Brothers look uh, really evil and really bad to take out Team Hell now. Uh, I thought they were a good storytelling. So two stars overall, but one eh, because it was quick. Uh, but yeah, okay match. On to the next match as we have Roman Reigns taking on Bobby Lashley. Now because this was a Roman Reigns match, I didn't really pay attention to the whole entire match. I was on my phone the entire time when I originally did this recording. But at least I got to witness this match and what now once I rewatched it and it was actually quite an impressive spot in this match. Yes, uh, I will only show you the ending as per usual, but yeah, there was a moment where he probably nicely did a double axe handle off the top rope. Uh, Roman Reigns chucked um, uh, uh, Bobby Lashley over the top rope and he landed on his side. That looked painful. As you can see, Bobby Lashley is making his entrance here. Uh, yeah, both were all right. I wouldn't say this match was great, but. Uh, yeah, no, it's just it's a Roman Reigns match. No, I, I, didn't, I don't like Roman Reigns matches anymore. Back in the day when he was representing the Shield, maybe, and when he just started becoming a single star, I was all up for it. But when I saw that 2014 World Rumble, that was it. Put me off of Roman Reigns, and I always will be put off of Roman Reigns from now on out, no matter how good he gets. But yeah, so yeah, Bobby Nashley did all right in this match. Uh, uh, he made a, an impressive. Uh, he made he's made an impressive improvement since his last match in WWE. Uh, this is the beginning of the match up here. He pushes them in the corner. It's a tussle, you know, a tussle, or a test of strength, if you will. Very. Uh, powerful, two pound, big men, big powerful men is all that was really in this matchup. Uh, uh, we're about to, I'm gonna show you the ending as uh, Road Marines here. He goes for a spear, uh, but he gets, caught, he gets caught by Lashley, and Lashley is an overhead belly to belly on the table. Whether or not if it was meant to break or not, I'm not too sure that the German announced team got out of the way just in time for that. Very impressive, uh, to say the name at least. And, uh, yeah, this is, the, this is when Bobby Lashley throws it back in the ring. He gets uh, blocked by Roman Reigns. I think he gets. He looks to go to for the second top rope move and hit, gets hit by the Superman punch, I think I remember. Um, yeah, there we go, though. That's the Superman punch. Roman Reigns is like, yeah, I've got this in the bag. I'm going to go for the spear. But then, as you'll see in a second, Roman is talking too much trash. And he gets connected with a spear of his own. And Bobby Lashley ends up winning uh, the matchup. And I, uh, now, there you go. There's the spear. One, two, three. It was over. And Bobby Lashley won the matchup. So, yeah, I thought that was a, a shocker. I was like, oh, he won. Congratulations, Bobby. This match again, I didn't pay much attention to, to, to it, and it's a Roman Reigns match. Probably to two, two, probably two and a half stars because at least it went longer than most of the matches, and it's just two powerhouse, powerhouses, two heavyweights colliding, and this man's wet dreams. And uh, speaking of wet dreams, this next match is the Raw Women's Title Match, the Extreme Rules Match. As uh, Natalia accompanying Nia Jax to the ring here, and also we had, and then here comes Alexa Bliss to the ring. Uh, 
So yeah, this match again, like I said, it was pretty short, very simple matchup. But Nia Jax had a run, she blocked a few uh, shots, in a sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she was like, yeah, no, no, no you, you're going to take this. So she took a few things under the ring, like it was a trash can, a couple of chairs, trash can lid, a kid no sticks, and was like, nope, 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 you're not gonna get this, you're not gonna get this, I'm gonna get the title back. But uh, Ronda Rousey, she got it fold, because uh, the other two were taken out, their best friend Natalia was at ringside for uh, uh, Night Jacks, and she got attacked by Mickey James and. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> and it was a bliss. Uh, this is the finish here of the match. This is the uh, end of the match right here. Is uh, lots of bliss tries to go for a crossbody, gets caught by Nia Jax, and I believe she goes to do a huge small drop, and then Mickey James, yeah, becomes put behind if I remember correctly. But then, uh, as we can see here, and then uh, Mickey James uh, passes the chair down. And BAM! There's the chair, just for shots. And uh, I think it was a uh, TDT that ended up this, finishing this matchup. BAM! There it is. And Alexa Bliss is still women's champion. There, there we go. Uh, so yeah, that match was probably okay and extreme. And yeah, yeah, I remember that Ronda Rousey got out and he was like pissed. And uh, this is the next match as it's Aiden English uh, introducing us to Rusev as Rusev took on AJ Styles. Looking stylish as always is English. And again, a very good intro, very good song for the Rusev, as per usual. And sing along with me, or if you know the words. Rusev Day! Now I thought possibly we are going to see a new WWE Champion in Rusev. But I was wrong. Dead wrong as Rusev makes his way to the ring in this matchup. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more after we see the introduction of the champion. And so uh, there he is. AJ Styles! It's just too sweet! Here, tonight. But that would be champion around his voice and still will be at the end of this match. Uh, oh, when I watched it, this matchup is very, very good actually. Uh, a lot of good spots and like Rusev aimed for the back, uh, AJ aimed for the legs and the calf, the upper thigh, to end him for the calf crusher. Uh, notice well, this wasn't a notice qualification match, it was just a normal singles match, so championship and top half, unfortunately. But, you know, Agent English did try and cheat, as you'll see at the end of this clip here. But when I get to the actual end of the match, you'll, you'll see that the turnbuckle block gets exposed. Rusev tries to attack AJ, ends up headbutting it, and uh, well, stuff went down from there. I love these introductions by Greg Hamilton, that's why he's one of my favourite announcers. I, the way he pronounces AJ Styles is just phenomenal. No pun intended. And uh, of course, as per usual, the announce table uh, has to go through the history of the WWE Championship 
And this is the end of the match right here. This is what I'm talking about. The, the accolade is the second time. He tries to get it on as he goes. AJ Styles boxes here. He goes for the wrong time buckle but then ends up making up for lost time by running towards the other one. Causing that accidental headbutt onto the exposed still. And AJ's like got Rusev here. At first I thought he was going to set up for the phenomenal forearm. But then he goes for the... 450 splash and I just love AJ Styles this is why, why he's my favourite superstar and Rusev kicks out at this point and it, but then AJ Styles does connect with the phenomenal forearm and ends up getting victory and that was a very very good match like any AJ Styles match yeah Rusev did get that big push to this uh, extreme rules main event but again, it's probably just a warm up for AJ Styles for when he faces uh, his next opponent at SummerSlam. No pun intended. And uh, so, this is the phenomenal forearm. Yeah, here we go. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do it. Uh, boom! There's the phenomenal forearm. And one, two, three, that's what I was talking about. And uh, the new and still WWE Champ. Well, burn it down! As here comes Seth Rollins for his Intercontinental Championship match. As he will be challenging Dolph Ziggler in an Iron Man match, and this, my opinion, probably the match of the night. Uh, my God, it was such a surprisingly a big amount of pinfalls uh, in this matchup. Well, as we see a Dolph Ziggler making his way to the ring here, uh, the Intercontinental Championship matchup. And the very good looking tights I uh, here, I, I didn't know what they, why he had evil on the back of uh, his tights here, but I alert, uh, looked up on the internet and why he had that, it was even fucking evil, I swear, at the time. And uh, this is the Joe Joe announcement for the Intercontinental Championship matchup here. Oh shit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, pretty much a huge matchup. Uh, so Valencia is looking to just first, this land, so not next to Don Sigler, and I see you at the end of the match. And this is a, the end of the match where basically it becomes 4-4 four, four and the can't stop after a super kick. Well, and what seconds left to go, Seth Rollins tries to go for the cover but the retirement runs out and it was a bit late for him to get the pinfall and we're all disappointed because we know what happens at the end of an Iron Man match if I had to try the champion retains the title. And um, I'll tell you what happened and how it all became 4-4 at the beginning of the match and we had Seth Rollins roll up Del Sigler to get the first pull, the pinfall. Then he hit, he got a pinfall a little bit later on after that but he hit him in with the curb stomp. Then Andrew McIntyre got involved in the Seth Rollins and causing a DQ. So he got three there but then because of that entire attack he ended up getting another two pinfalls and an extra one later on it ended up being 3-3 three, three, and then Dolph Ziggler put the, a cheeky dirty pin on the ropes making it 4-3 and then right at the very end of the match uh, uh, Seth Rollins finally got his fourth and final one and the uh, Kurt Angle comes out now and is like we ain't ending this the way you think and it's like no screw you guys 
Uh, we're gonna do this and start this match over. As you know, here, but you know, this is the whole WWE WrestleMania, WWE WrestleMania 12 all over again. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels went into overtime because it's the whole Neil Mil situation, uh, which I thought was really good. And the distraction from Drew McIntyre costs us Rollins as he hits the zigzag one, two, three, and is still the WWE Intercontinental Champion. A very cheap heat way of winning the championship and retaining the title. I have to admit, it was a good extreme rules. Well, at least I thought it was to begin with. This match, I'd say, was probably four stars for me because of the, the, the way it ended with the whole quick victory after the distraction was a very kill tactic to do, and I love that type of thing. Um, if Stu uh, McIntyre holding uh, Ziggler on his shoulder, celebrating the matchup. Overall, it was just a, 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 it was an okay pay per view. Again, it's just uh, no pun intended, warming us up for a certain slam as the replay here shows BAM! Getting rid of Stu McIntyre, but he hit the zigzag and it was enough to keep down Seth Rollins! And so, yeah, that was Extreme Rules. I enjoyed it. I had all the matches there. I'm not going to go through them again like I usually do at the end of every video. Again, I do apologise for the way this video was made because my first recording didn't come out. But if you did like it, let me know and I'll do more reviews and reactions the way, this way. And uh, until. Next time, I'm down on Video Tree 2000, also now I'm down to touch down on Xbox Live, saying bye bye. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to watch the previous video, click on the video on the left. But if you want to watch the playlist, then click on the video on the right. Also, feel free to click subscribe by clicking on the Master Chief icon on the top.